the internet has kind of dubbed Jill as one of the most popular characters of the series. I bet you say that to all the girls. Just the pretty ones. Come on, let's go. Resident Evil is one of the greatest gaming series in the world. No one is going to argue that. However, there is something that does require discussion. As you have noticed, we've had some really dope Resident Evil games in the past couple of years, specifically from 2020. We've had Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil 8, which is made great by our Lord, Lady and Savior Lady Alcina Dimitrescu. Step on me, mommy! <coughs> and of course, Resident Evil 3 Remake. Now with the upcoming Resident Evil 4 Remake, I did some thinking and thought to myself, we about to see Leon, Ada, that annoying ass girl Ashley who's the president's daughter for whatever reason, and a bunch of other recognizable characters and enemies. And with the games mentioned earlier, we've seen what our beloved characters have gone through. And with the other installments, specifically Resident Evil 6, we have an idea of where our characters had left off. But if you also notice, we barely get any mention or any appearance of one specific character, Jill Valentine. Let me explain. Since Resident Evil 6, we have seen Leon, Chris, Ada, Sherry from RE2, and some random offshoot offspring of Wesker named Jake. But where's Jill? Last time we saw her, she was being taken over by Wesker's bullshit back in RE5. And honestly, that game didn't do her justice. She's one of the first characters of the series, and it's like she flat out disappeared. And we all know there's another Resident Evil bound to come out. So, in this video, I'm standing behind my girl Jill, and I'm giving my 10 reasons why Jill should come back in the next Resident Evil game. Jill Valentine. She came before Leon, Claire, Ada, Sherry, and she especially came before all those one-time characters that came and went. So it only seems right to bring her back on the fact alone that she's been there since the beginning. Jill was one of the first characters to appear in the first Resident Evil that started it all. Rolling into the infamous Spencer Mansion with Chris, Barry, and Wesker's bitch ass. And since she had sworn to stop Umbrella and all their bullshit after the Spencer Mansion incident, her story is something that is much more desired than Chris's sad sitting at a bar drinking himself to death because he can't keep his people alive sob ass story. So when you play the original RE1, you inevitably come across the character select screen. You have to choose between Chris or Jill, and chances are, you probably chose Jill. You know how I know? Because several other people chose Jill. A lot of several other people. In a discussion poll on a multi-platform forum site, ResetEra.com, there was a question with the poll question of who people chose and the results had shown that out of 201 voters, 73.1% of them chose Jill. If you do the math, and by do the math as in you look at the poll question, because math is hard, that's approximately 147 individuals. Now of course, there are probably other polls out there that may or may not support this, but this poll serves its purpose of showing that Jill is the preferred character. And in truth, we like playing as female characters. Maybe not for the right reasons, but let's be real, Chris is boring, and Jill's cool. Jill. Jill, it's me, Chris. With Chris's return to Resident Evil 8, we might as well just give Jill her turn so we can see what happened to her and have her pop up back in the Resident Evil series. Because again, we saw Chris back in RE6, 
We saw him in RE7, and now we saw him in RE8, and throughout all those times, we're probably wondering, where is Jill? I feel like with her, with the fan base, and me being a personal fan of the character, we are owed an explanation as to what Jill has been up to. And again, I, I can't stress this enough, we've seen enough of Chris. It's about time that the other original survivor gets her fair share of the spotlight once again. You're our only hope to survive this. What happened to Jill after RE5? What happened to her after her rescue from Wesker's mind control bug? What happened to her after she left Kajuju, which is the name of the fictional area of West Africa? Did she go to therapy? Did she seek any kind of help after what happened to her? Is she still going after Umbrella? Or has she become a sad sack as much as Chris has? And I really hope not, because again, Jill is the better of the two characters in my opinion, and I feel like because of that, she uh, she is as much of a survivor as Chris, which means her story, whatever it is, or whatever it's going to be, should be given a tragedy to triumph kind of approach, meaning that we take whatever happened to her from RE5, we see her story from there, and it progresses to her just doing her best to survive and then thrive afterwards, but not in like some kind of girl boss kind of thing, but just the, uh, hey, I've been through a lot, my mind's not completely there, but I'm doing the best I can, also, I'm still fighting Umbrella and I'm fighting all these zombie mofos. Something to explain the huge gap between the ending of Resident Evil 5 and where we are now at the end of Resident Evil 8. Don't you trust your partner? That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life. Let's be real, and people are probably gonna fight me for this, but Jill is better than Chris. And I'm not saying that to start a whole fight or anything. I'm saying that objectively, because she has more charisma and more of an approachable personality than Chris. Chris is just this stoic, stalwart, like macho dude that understandably his job requires him to be as such but so does jill and despite that she has those characteristics as well as being charismatic and being someone people can talk to so putting that together we've seen jill to be more compassionate and more of the survivor mentality in the sense that she would look for more survivors and possibly be more successful whereas chris is the kind of dude who's just like if i find survivors great but if not then whatever whereas jill would actually put more effort into looking for survivors if she believes there are Jill is by far probably the most extensive researcher I've seen in the Resident Evil series. If you remember the remake, you saw the huge wall of pictures and documents and information that Umbrella pretty much sent Nemesis after her to shut down. And the fact that they did send it to take her out permanently proves that she is that much of a problem for Umbrella. She's not going after her their bag. She's going after their politicalization tactics their finances in connection to other groups, their political and their social hold on pretty much their spread across the whole country. She's going after individuals as well as specific groups that are targeted whether for or by Umbrella. So it kind of goes to show how well of a researcher she is because there are instances where you see information about Wesker, about Umbrella itself, and about how wide and far spread their influences are and how easily the average Joe could actually stand up against this corporation if Umbrella's true intentions were made public to the people. If anything, that wall of research is a testament to Jill's pursuit of putting an end to Umbrella and their disregard for human life. She's essentially fighting capitalism. Uh... 
And to add on to the previous point, the fact that she's a part of STARS is the more interesting factor in Umbrella's pursuit of Jill. I say interesting because Jill, as a member of STARS, was actually the only person, well, I mean, aside from Chris and Brad, who wanted to do further research into Umbrella's exploits and wanted to see what was going on with them. But the leader of the organization, Chief Irons, told them to stand down and discontinue their pursuit of Umbrella, which explains why Jill's research extensifies immensely again with proof of her research all around her apartment wall her research was not permitted by chief irons so that is why she decided to do her research on her own knowing what it could cost her knowing how much it would put her life at risk and honestly knowing how much it puts her teammates lives at risk and at first she would probably think that she's being selfish for doing that but at the end of the day being a member of stars means that you signed up for this and if you weren't willing to take that risk, then you really shouldn't have been a part of the team. Jill knew what she signed up for, and she knew what needed to be done. And unfortunately, since Chief Irons is, or well was, a sellout for Umbrella, which she kind of figured out on her own, she knew that she was on her own, whether she liked it or not. There are no survivors. They're all dead. You guys don't look like any rescue team I've ever seen. Look, I can't stay, but if whoever's holding your leash cares about what happened here, I'd start with City Hall. You'll find intel on Umbrella there. But if I were you, I'd get out of Raccoon City while you still can. Every other character is overrated. Leon? Yeah, we've seen him thousands of times. Chris, at this point, he's mean that mi as Mr. Boulder Punch. Claire, well, I mean, I like her too, but she's had plenty of screen time. And Ada? To be honest, I don't even know what Ada is at this point. What even is she? At first, she was a catalyst to the story, and then she was an actual major point in the plot, and now, I don't know what she is. And I don't know if anyone knows what she is. I mean, yeah, sure, we know that she's a love interest to Leon, and people want to ship them and all that, and Leon's an absolute simp for her, but objectively speaking, what is Ada to this story? What does she bring to the story beyond just being somebody that Leon can't seem to get over? If someone could actually explain what Ada is at this point, then I'm all ears. Please, let's talk about it, because I really don't know what, what Ada does here at this point. I'm not hating on Ada, I just don't understand what her character is in relation to the story anymore. Can't stay out of trouble, can you, Leon? <laughs> and always one step behind. That corrupt organization must be stopped. Activate! I can't let it end here! Time for my secret weapon! You'll feel it in the morning! At this point, I don't think I even need to make an argument to point out that Jill is possibly one of the most popular characters in the Resident Evil series. Between her charisma, her story as a survivor, and overall gameplay in the game she's been in, she has become a fan favorite for most Resident Evil players across all generations of gamers. According to an article written on Eurogamer.net, Jill is one of the most loved characters of the series, along with her arch nemesis, Albert Wesker, who I'll be making a video about later on. But yeah, the internet has kind of dubbed Jill as one of the most popular characters of the series. I bet you say that to all the girls. Just the pretty ones. Come on, let's go. Done. Give me the vaccine, you greedy son of a bitch. No, 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 no. You bring mum. I like mum. We shall make ours an ongoing arrangement. With the ending of Resident Evil 8, we're now transitioning into what most likely will be Resident Evil 9, and there is an opportunity for Jill to make another appearance. 
She could play a role in perhaps protecting Rose from any other threats that may come from the family that we had to fight in Resident Evil 8. Maybe Jill becomes an outside mentor for her, or maybe even Jill's just doing her own thing that somehow causes her to cross paths with Rose and her story. Whatever the story will be at this point, I'm just hoping that they bring Jill back because she deserves another chance in the spotlight. She deserves to have her story brought back into the series and most importantly, the fans deserve to see their girl make a comeback. So that's pretty much it. These are 10 reasons why I think Jill Valentine should be brought back in the Resident Evil series. I said everything I wanted to say about her. I made this video to defend her, not that she really needs defending, but more so to state the fact that she hasn't been in Resident Evil for quite some time and with the new Resident Evil that's going to come out because there's going to be one, it's about time Jill finally came back into the limelight. Again, we've seen all the other characters. We know where they've been. We can probably assume where they're going. As for Jill, we don't know. And it would be a good opportunity to just finally answer all of that. To answer where she's been, what she's been doing, and what she could potentially be doing now. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, check out the other vids, because doing all that helps the channel grow and it helps to bring out more content. I'm going to make an Albert Wesker video, basically summarizing his story and my personal take on him. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to watch it and take care. Stay blessed and prosperous. Let's do this.